we had read An Inconvenient Truth by Al Gore. And my perspective on the world and humanity completely shifted. I thought, no one must know about climate change. If people knew about it, they would be doing something. I remember going home after school one day and telling my dad what I had learned. And I remember him telling me not to worry, because climate change wasn't going to be something that would affect me in my lifetime. He said it would be an issue that people would feel in a couple of centuries. And by that point, we would have solutions to fix the problem. That was almost eight years ago. And now, the problem has worsened more than anyone could ever have imagined. We have just over 10 years to take action before we see irreversible effects of the climate crisis. And that action must begin in the next 18 months, or we will see climate catastrophe that we can't even begin to understand. Climate change is real. I live in Los Angeles, and for two weeks last year, the sky was filled with smoke from the Holsey forest fires that wiped out nearly 100,000 acres of land. There are still 1,300 people missing in the Bahamas from Hurricane Dorian. Farms in the Midwest were destroyed from flooding this spring. This is climate change, and it still can get so much worse. Our existence as we know it will not continue if we continue down the trajectory that we are on. Something has to be done. Elected officials and world leaders have shown us that they do not have the courage to take the action necessary to save our planet. And so we must tell them. We must show them why it's important. Climate change can be overwhelming. It can be scary to the point that all you want to do is block it out. But we can't. Because if we do, who will stand up for us? Who will protect us? Over the last year, young people in the US and around the world have found a voice in a way our generation never has before. We are leading the largest coordinated global social movement of our time. And it's because that's the only thing left to do. We don't get the privilege, the opportunity, to sit around and dream about the future. Because frankly, we don't know if we're going to have one. We're scared. We're afraid. But that doesn't mean we give up. That doesn't mean we stop trying. It means we dream bigger. It means we dream louder. It means we take action now. We are not going to sit around and watch our future be destroyed before our eyes. My organization, Future Coalition, our goal is to provide connective tissue between youth led organizations working to create change in their communities. For the September 20th climate strikes, we brought together the leading youth led climate organizations in the US as part of a climate strike coalition to ensure that collaboration was happening on every level and that we were unified in our vision and message for the strike. Our, our collective power is what is going to save us. Coming together, putting our differences aside, and uniting over our common goal is the only thing that is going to save us. September 20th will also be the first global climate strike where young people have asked adults to join in, to unite with us. In the US, it's the first time that the energy of the new wave of young climate activists has been brought together with the foundation and infrastructure of adults that have been working in the climate movement for the last many decades. Together, we've been able to plan what will be the largest climate mobilization in US history. And more than that, by working together, we've been able to ensure that Friday is only the beginning. Friday is not a culmination of the work already done, but rather a launch of a new era of the climate movement and the work that will come before us. And everyone is invited to join us. This movement is a movement from the grassroots. It's being led by young people in hundreds, thousands of cities across the, across the country and across the world. This is a people's movement. It means something that young people globally are united behind this movement. It means something that Palestinian and Israeli kids are striking side by side. It means something that young people are skipping school for the, to stand up for the right to have a future. The solutions are out there. There is still time to do something. There is still time to restore our climate. There is still time to fix what we've broken. But we must act now. Eight years ago, my dad was wrong when we first talked about climate change. He didn't know. Most people didn't know. But now he does. And so do you. And so there aren't any excuses anymore. 
My dad will be striking this Friday for me and my siblings because he knows he has no other choice. And now it's time for adults across the world to follow in that example. Strike for your kids. Strike for your grandkids. Strike for the kids that live down the street from you. Because we need you. We need each of you. Our collective power is the only thing that is going to save us. And so it's up to each of us to make the choice, to choose to fight. Fight for us, fight for the planet, fight for the future, because we want to be able to dream again. Thank you all so much, and I hope to see you out in the streets on Friday.